Hi, and welcome to the Claris Engage 2020 session on identity management. My name is Wen. You may have come across me in, in the Pharmacy community. At Sign Consulting, I lead a very talented team of about 30 full-time developers. I have been fortunate enough to be a speaker at most of the last 25 Pharmacy developer conferences. And most of my sessions had to do with server deployments, integrations, or security. And today's session really is all about security, or at least a very important aspect of security, how to identify your users and authenticate them into your solution. I'm very honored to do this session today together with Stephen Blackwell. Stephen, over to you. Thank you, Wem. Welcome to Claris Engage 2020 on demand sessions. As Wem said, I'm Stephen H. Blackwell. I have 30 years experience as a FileMaker developer. I've focused the past 20 years principally on security issues in the FileMaker platform. I'm honored to have received a number of awards from Claris FileMaker, including the first Excellence Award in 1998. I'm an author of a book about FileMaker security, numerous white papers, and the FileMaker security blog. And I'm a Platinum Member Emeritus. So what is this session about? What do we want to talk about? More importantly, what do we want you to know and understand after you've finished watching the session? We're going to talk about how security in general and how modern and effective identity and access management in particular are essential for successful digital transformation. You've got to have them. We're going to talk about some important security topics, including identity and access management, identity federation, identity brokers, identity providers, and passwordless access. We're going to talk about advantages and benefits of modern identity and access management. These accrue both to the organization and to individual users if they are properly configured. And we're going to show some actual examples of this and explain them. So, Wim, what is digital transformation? Let's first try and define a little bit what digital transformation means. Used to be all things IT were considered a basic necessity, just like running water or electricity. It's just something that you needed to have as a company to keep your computers running. Over time, we have come to the realization that your software and your infrastructure can really make a difference in how your company operates and how it differentiates itself uh, with its competitors, with your competitors. And at some level, we have always known that, but the pace of that realization has changed dramatically in the last year and the pandemic has played a huge factor in that. And of course as businesses we all have challenges. We all live and operate in, a, in an environment that changes all the time. The, the demands of our customers change. The competition finds new things or does things differently. And, and of course the technology itself changes a lot. So you have all these buzzwords there on the screen and what it really means is that when a company does those well and they find ways of doing their software development, their software deployments, their infrastructure, when they find ways to doing that well, it can make a huge difference in the way that they survive and the way that they thrive. In all of those challenges, of course, security tends to be the thing that gets overlooked. When things need to happen in a hurry, security is probably the thing that is, uh, is kept by the wayside a little bit. So the more dynamic it gets, the tougher it is to keep up with security. And we're all scrambling and it's easy to take shortcuts. So all of that speaks more to the background where digital transformation is born. What we mean by digital transformation is basically ways to digitize your workflows. Do the same things, but without shoveling too much paper, without walking around or having to move your data in, in physical form between your different departments uh, in and out of your company. And ideally, you want to do that without reinventing the wheel. And that's why effective 
digital transformation makes use of services that have already solved certain problems and you stitch those services together. So you orchestrate your workflows so that they can make use of these things that already exist. So we're talking about APIs and, and all of these things. And you supplement the things that make your business uniquely yours. And those solved problems include identity management and authentication. And we'll show that later in this session. And so for a visual, this is what digital transformation looks like, right? You have your, your Pharmacabase solution somewhere in the middle because it drives your business, but you make use of all these other services in a digital fashion, uh, and your data has to flow from each one of those. When you look at this and you see your users logging into these different services so that they can get their work done and so that it all happens in a very intuitive fashion, ideally, you want to have just one identity for that user, an identity that is trusted across all these different domains. And being able to achieve that is crucial. It's even critical for that effective digital transformation. Without a single identity for your users across all of these different services, you're hugely increasing your risk, your attack vectors, your attack surface becomes so much better. Now, the good news is that both Claris products, FileMaker and Claris Connect, play very well in this area. They play very well in their ability to exchange data with other systems and between each other, obviously. But also in their ability to leverage identities that are maintained elsewhere. So with some good definition around digital transformation, there are still many questions that we can address. And Stephen is going to cover some of those. So what are some questions that we might ask ourselves? What type of information do we want to know about identity management and digital transformation? The first is, what is the impact of digital transformation for the FileMaker community? That's why we're here. That's what we're trying to accomplish at the outset as a fundamental first principle. Secondly, we might want to know why our security in general and federated identity management prerequisites for successful digital transformation. What is it about them that is compelling for the success of these activities? Third, we might want to know how can the FileMaker platform, both on premises and in the cloud, employ and integrate federated identity management into its operations. We would also want to know how does the OAuth 2 OpenID Connect protocol facilitate these activities. This is a core standard for modern identity and access management. Conversely, we might ask ourselves, are there other protocols that administrators and developers can use as well to achieve modern identity management? And finally, we might want to know what is the human role in the success of digital transformation? This is core. This is central. This is the overriding element. The human behavior will overcome system constraints in practically every situation imaginable. This is particularly important when we consider that 61% of people use the same password on multiple services and that in 17% of those instances the password is 123456. Yes, you did hear that correctly. 17% of the passwords, 123456. 80% of data breaches involve compromised credentials. That is an astonishingly large figure and one that should give rise to considerable concern by developers and administrators. So, when we delve further into the issue and the process and the impact of digital transformation, 
we will discover that customers are at the center of digital transformation. But there's confusion around the word digital. The word digital suggests that technology is the core of digital transformation. But technology is only part of the story. And it's part of the story only because customers demand technology-centric interactions with the companies with whom they do business. Think about that for a minute. Customers demand those types of interaction. Customer preferences and behavior drive enterprise technology decisions. In other words, the core motivation for digital transformation originates with individual customers. Digital transformation realigns an enterprise. And that enterprise must then focus its efforts, both technological and organizational, on meeting customer demands both now and in the future. Digital transformation unquestionably is software empowered, but that's distinguished from technology centric. At customer's behest, software changes the way the business runs in terms of customer experience, operational processes, and the organization itself. Rethinking these processes leads to a reconsideration of underlying technology infrastructure in the particular organization. And given the rapid pace of change in the IT world, enterprises must continue to innovate to keep up with customer needs. Customers demand change. Software makes it all possible. Identifying your user, it, that's all about authentication. And it may be obvious, but I will state it anyway, that is very different than authorization. Authentication is all about who are you, and authorization is what can you do, what are you allowed to do once you are inside the solution. So we are talking about trying to establish who the user is that is trying to get into your solution. And before we decide to let that user in, we need to be absolutely certain that that user is who they are, that they are not an imposter. So it really comes down to asking a bunch of questions. And when we boil it down, it really comes down to the first and the last. Who is the user? And how do we verify that? But more importantly, who do we trust to do that verification for us? Who are we asking that question to about who that user is? And increasingly, that question will not be asked of the user. We're not going to ask the user to identify themselves. And if you recall that visual that I had about digital transformation and all these disconnected services, if we want to be secure, we want to reduce the size of the attack surface. Right? We want to maintain as few identity stores as possible. And in the traditional model, when everybody is on, in the same network, in the same building, you can log into your machine with your Active Directory account, you can access a printer, you can access a file share, but that's still all within the same domain. With digital transformation, you have all these disconnected services that solve a problem for you, so you want to use them. We have to get into the concept of delegated and federated authentication, meaning that we have to be able to trust that the user has been authenticated elsewhere. That brings us into a very interesting security model called Zero Trust. That's a model where you really trust nothing and nobody. Whether the user is already inside your organization or has previously been authenticated, for instance, by logging into their machine, you don't trust that. You always verify. And that rolls very seamlessly into continuous authentication whereby in the old model, the authentication happened once. You get authenticated when you open the FAMIC solution, or you get authenticated when you log into your machine. Continuous authentication is totally different and fits in with that zero trust model where authentication happens 
throughout the whole process, every step of the way. And obviously, you want to make that as uh, intuitive and frictionless for the user as, um, as you can make it. So by now, we hope that you are on board with the notion that effective identity management really sits at the very core of that next wave of automations and orchestrations that we call digital transformation. We want that authentication to be seamless, where it happens in one place and is trusted by others. And obviously, to make that secure, so that we have confidence in whomever we pick as the identity provider, so that we can have that assurance of attribution. That attribution is really critical. It allows us to enforce business processes. And it's also important for legal and potentially for forensics purposes as well. So let's talk then about the advantages of a modern identity and access management system. And there are a lot of them. First, a system like this can simplify life for end users of uh, your applications and solutions no end. Uh, help desk tickets. Uh, forgotten passwords, all that type of stuff that frustrate and aggravate uh, users can have significant uh, improvement in uh, their behavior uh, with a modern system. can also help curb problematic password issues and principally by removing usernames and passwords from applications as we'll see can also help enforce the same identity verification everywhere and enforce multi-factor authentication policies across everything that needs them. A modern system, in addition to its use with the FileMaker platform, uh, can be used uh, with other items as well for uh, access to resources, on the network uh, and a host of other uh, identification uh, points. As described by search security, uh, a modern system can also simplify the lives of security teams. They're not in a constant state of turmoil rushing around in an organization trying to address uh, problems. It can also help improve security across the now decentralized organization, and particularly with the proliferation of remote users and remote access points, this can be critical. This helps reduce management cost and IT cost as well, a significant benefit. This also, a modern system can help to maintain and to prove regulatory compliance for just a host of state, national, and trans-border uh, security requirements. This also facilitates the adoption of zero trust architecture and Centrify has uh, described uh, this in some considerable detail and has been at the forefront of the zero trust movement. Basically, it means trust nothing, verify everything. You assume that you are going to be breached or that you are breached and you verify everything about the access process until you're completely satisfied. You cannot assume that an attempted connection or an attempted access to uh, an asset is legitimate just because it has the correct username or comes from a company issued device. This is a pessimistic, not optimistic, security framework. Zero trust. Trust nothing verify everything. There are four core elements to zero trust. You verify the user. You verify the user's device. You limit access and privileges only to those needed to perform the assigned task. 
and you learn and adapt as you go so that you make uh, adjustments. And the movement from central offices to remote locations that we've seen in recent months uh, is a classic example of learning and adapting. This also introduces the concept of contextual authentication, where you balance trust against risk. And it lets an organization implement uh, simple policies that allow or deny access to applications based on such elements as the user's role, the device usage, is a user customarily using a specific device, or if a user tries to achieve access with a different device, is this a red flag? The IP address and geographical location of the user is also something that the uh, contextual authentication can address. And finally, zero trust and a modern system can help to address items related to some of those human factors we talked about, including password sharing among users, which seems to be uh, prolific in many organizations, password reuse across multiple sites, we talked about the impact of that, and inattention to efforts that are designed to compromise credentials. Users simply don't pay attention or don't react appropriately to strange items or items that are contrived and structured to attempt to trick them into compromising their credentials. So, a question we might want to ask is, what is the problem here that we're trying to address? This is pretty fundamental to a clear and cogent understanding of modern identity and access management. InfoRisk today suggests some of these problems. Increasingly dynamic, agile, modular, distributed software expands the threat surface and increases the risk profile. That's pretty much it in a nutshell, but diving deeper, we can say some examples of items that generate these increased risk are insecure remote access points, sniffing, lost or unattended devices, a huge issue, the use of bring your own device by remote workers. The inability to push security updates to remote devices. VPNs that grant too much access to organizational networks and assets. Insufficient monitoring of behavior, activities, and related items. Perimeters have disappeared. This is fundamental. Users are now the perimeter. When everything thus is connected, security is everything. What's the problem? Continuing. Effective security depends upon and starts with effective identity and access management. Who are you? Are you who you say you are? How do we know this? Whom do we trust to verify this? Who are you? Are you who you say you are? How do we know this? Whom do we trust to verify this? When everything is connected, security is everything. And Another problem, again, our friend human behavior, including the sharing of passwords and the failure to monitor devices at their endpoints. So, Wim, what does this look like? How do we make it work? How do we structure it? 
for the FileMaker platform? And how do we integrate it with other IT assets? To frame the concept of modern authentication, let's have a quick look at uh, where we have come from. Now, for the past 60 years, passwords have been the primary authentication method. That's what we mean when we say basic authentication. It's the combination of a username and a password. And the username never really was a secret. So it really came down to the password. The password was the only real secret. And the assumption that a particular someone is the only one with access to that secret, that's no longer a very healthy assumption. So we're slowly moving away from that basic authentication and we're now using multiple factors to authenticate a person. And that pace has been increasing a lot in no small part because of the pandemic as well. But now we have those multiple factors and it's gaining a lot of acceptance. There's also the notion of contextual authentication, times of day, places, those kinds of things. And of course, all of that is helped by some biometrics, by keys, and there's a big movement towards doing everything completely without passwords. Now, the next generation of authentication is not going to be tied to a one-time event. It's going to be continuous. So it's not going to be based on a single event in time, but rather it's going to be based on real-time data and real-time behavior, and it will have a completely passwordless foundation. There's a very good infographic from the one login team that visualizes that, that path that we're on, that journey that we're on very well, where it talks us through the original authentication method uh, and takes us through every phase of where we are now, but also where we are going um, with all the different aspects that come with that sort of authentication. It's a very interesting read and a very nice summary of where we have been, where we are now and where we are going. Now, if we bring it back to FileMaker, we've always had this, right? The login dialog that will ask us for a username and a password. And what that really means is that the FileMaker file itself holds the user's identity. So for all intents and purposes, the FileMaker file is the identity provider. And of course, this only works for individual users, right? There's no concept of a group. Every user has to have their username and password. Now, back in 2004, more than 15 years ago, when FileMaker 7 was released, and as long as your FileMaker file was hosted on FileMaker server, we were given the ability to use Microsoft's Active Directory and Apple's Open Directory as identity stores. And there was a, another method as well, whereby you could create local user accounts and local user groups in the operating system of your FileMaker server. That's been an option that has been largely overlooked, but still very, very uh, potent. And what that allows us to do as well is to gently move away from keeping track of individual users in our FileMaker solutions to doing group-based authentication. Inside the FileMaker file, we now can create groups of users, tie those to the privilege sets. We do not need to keep track of single individual users in our FileMaker solutions anymore. So our login dialog really becomes something like this with all of the options that we have. We can still keep individual FileMaker accounts if we want to, but we can have Active Directory or Open Directory as the identity store or use the operating system on your FileMaker server. Now this only works, as I mentioned, when your FileMaker file is hosted on FileMaker server, right? Because the FileMaker server has to be a member of the Active Directory domain or the Open Directory realm for this to work. The operating system of the FileMaker server machine needs to be able to communicate with the identity provider. In FileMaker 16, and that happened in uh, 2017, so about three years ago, we were giving three additional identity providers. Uh, and those are most commonly referred to as the OAuth identity providers. We have Amazon accounts, Google accounts, and Microsoft Azure AD accounts. And of course, we can use those uh, to identify individual users, meaning that we would still have to create a matching account in the FileMaker file. We don't have to maintain passwords or anything like that, but we still have to have the, the individual user account. And of those three, only the Microsoft Azure AD 
had that concept of group-based authentication. So that was really interesting, but when we dove a little deeper into what exactly made that work, what we discovered was that those three OWAP providers, those were really made to work because of the way that Famica Server supports OpenID Connect, which is uh, based on the OAuth 2 protocol. So you may ask, why, why do we care? Well, we do care because of that digital transformation that we mentioned, right? Authentication is a solved problem. It's not a problem that we have to resolve. We don't have to invent the wheel here. We can use existing identity providers and their services and all of the additional services that they provide. They do excellent threat management. They have excellent reporting. So we want to use some of that. And if you look at these uh, at this Forrester Wave quadrant, you see a bunch of identity providers listed there. So if we take it back, what really happens with FileMaker Server is that FileMaker Server supports OpenID Connect. So for all intents and purposes, we could have our login dialog do this now. And these are the classic ones. We just talked about that. We can still use individual accounts, Microsoft Active Directory or Apple Open Directory, local accounts and groups in the operating system of the FileMaker server, and the three OWAP providers that are exposed to the dialog. But really, because it's OpenID Connect, the picture looks very much more like this. We can use any identity provider that supports OpenID Connect. And what we show here on the, on the screen, those are not identity providers that we think could work. We have already implemented every single one of those for clients. So these already all work. And there's plenty more. As long as the identity provider supports OpenID Connect, chances are you can use it to authenticate users into your FileMaker solution. Now, when we look at a file that is being hosted by Claris FileMaker Cloud, then we can use identity providers such as Claris ID, which is really based on AWS Cognito. We can use Active Directory Federated Services, and we can use Okta. Those three are completely supported by FileMaker Cloud. And because we really have four different FileMaker servers these days, we have FileMaker Cloud, and then the three on-premise versions, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It, it does pay to be watchful for any functional differences between uh, all of those. And we have summarized the, our findings in some white papers that you can find, and I'll show you the links later in this presentation. That notion that you can use any identity provider that supports OpenID Connect really works with any FileMaker server, any on-premise FileMaker server since FileMaker Server 17. And as I mentioned, do watch out for the functional differences between the Linux version and the Windows version and the Mac OS version. And to show you how far we have come, we will show you a demo of how to log into a FileMaker solution without any password. So a completely passwordless authentication into FileMaker. And for that demo, we will use a, a YubiKey, which is the security key that you see on the left-hand side. And as an identity provider for this particular one, we have chosen Red Hat's Keycloak. And Keycloak is one of those identity providers that you do not have to subscribe to. It's not a commercial service. It's an open source solution. So you can install it and run it under your full control. So let's look at how we have put that together. So within Keycloak, we have our, our settings. So don't worry too much about what it looks like. There is a white paper that describes that, but you can see we have a login set up and users can log in with their email. If we wanted to, we could also pick some federated or delegated identity providers, right? We can use Keycloak as the go-between between some of these other providers. And we have two groups set up in Keycloak, FM managers, FM users, and we have two users, Joe and Jane, or users that have been set up in our Keycloak identity store. And both of those users have already registered their YubiKey so that they can use passwordless entry in anything that uh, Keycloak provides. And we also have a flow set up, which is a login flow. It's the, the logical steps that are being taken when somebody logs in. 
So if we switch to FileMaker and we open a file that is hosted on our FileMaker server, the FileMaker login dialog will now display our Keycloak identity provider. It, it takes a little bit of configuration on the FileMaker side, but that's all there is. When we click that, we are taken to the Keycloak login page where the user identifies themselves, not authorized, but basically authenticates. The user touches their YubiKey and over on the FileMaker side, they are let into the FileMaker solution without providing any password. And FileMaker knows exactly who they are. That's just how external authentication works. So the authentication of your user the validation of who that user is, the user's claim about who they are, happens completely outside of your solution. And to drive home the point on how easy identity management becomes inside your solution, we want to show you that you really only need groups, yet your solution knows all the relevant details about your user. The user's account, the group they belong to, gets passed by the identity provider to FileMaker so that it can be used inside your FileMaker solution. And while we mainly mentioned OpenID Connect and OAuth, pretty much all the providers that we have mentioned that we had on the graph there can also be used as a broker. So that if you have an identity store that only speaks SAML or only understands and, and supports Open LDAP, you can still use any of those as that broker and channel to your SAML provider or your Open LDAP provider or your social uh, identity provider. If you wanted to use a LinkedIn account, for instance, to log into FileMaker Solution, that is possible too. Over the past 12 months, Stephen Blackwell and I have written a handful of white papers that describe that process in a lot of technical detail and we have covered pretty much all of those identity providers that we had on the slide a few slides back. One login, Okta, Alt0, all of those are covered and how to set them up. On the Saline Consulting website, under the OAuth tag, you'll find plenty of blog posts that describe the process and that will link you to the white papers. And the white papers themselves you can find on FM forums. If you go to the white paper section, you will find all the white papers you can download and read that are co-authored by Stephen Blackwell and myself. Thank you, Wim. Let's recap what we've learned and seen here today. We've discussed how the success of digital transformation for an organization depends upon having a robust and modern identity and access management process. We've discussed how the Claris FileMaker platform allows for the exchange of data, specifically authentication data, from trusted sources. And we've described some problems with legacy identity and access management systems that need addressing. We've described a number of advantages that can be gleaned from the use of a modern identity and access management process. We've shown how a variety of various identity as a service provider and identity as a service broker utilizing OAuth2 and OpenID Connect protocols can be used to authenticate users to hosted FileMaker Pro databases. Who are you? Are you who you say you are? How do we know this? Whom do we trust to verify this? This modern system of identity and access management allows us to answer these questions with a high degree of confidence. We've also shown how this process can include the use of multi-factor authentication and how it also can include secure access to hosted FileMaker profiles without the use of passwords. To wrap things up, we want to leave you with this thought. In a brand new world where the old traditional model of having all users in one place and having your perimeter defenses in place and having your firewall protects uh, that perimeter, the identity 
has taken on a new importance. And protecting that identity is crucial. On behalf of Stephen Blackwell and myself, thank you for listening in. Find us on the Filemaker community. We're open to any and all questions. Thank you.